So you focus a lot on enterprise mobility, but do you also get involved in the B2C, the consumer side? Uh, absolutely, right? So, uh, so when we think of enterprise mobility, we're thinking of how do enterprises leverage mobile, both from a business to employee and business to consumer. So absolutely, so it, it spans both scenarios. So there's a plethora right. of products in your mobile inventory today, Vishy. Mm -hmm. How does a CIO sit down when he looks at, okay, I have marketing requirements for B2C, I have my business to employees, I have all these different needs, how do I know which platform? When do I use the agentry platform you acquired through Cyclo? When do you use the former Sybase and Wire platform? When do you use Mobilizer? You know, how do you know where to start on any particular app? What questions would you ask yourself? All right, so I, um, so anytime we engage with customers, uh, you know, where we typically start off with uh, is a discovery process that focuses on, you know, if you're starting off with, I need a mobile strategy, uh, or I need to figure out, uh, you know, a mobile portfolio. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, some techniques in terms of discovery workshops uh, that are very kind of compressed and in an accelerated fashion can very quickly identify, you know, based on a repository of use cases that you've typically seen in specific industry verticals that we bring to that customer to say, you know, here's a typical list of use cases that are relevant for you, Mr. Customer, in your industry vertical. Let's brainstorm and figure out which ones make sense. Go through a quick prioritization based on, you know, typical two by two in terms of, you know, uh, degree of difficulty to implement versus business value. So you kind of start picking off like, the low hanging fruit, so to say. And then we get into the technology discussion of uh, not necessarily the platform per se, but based on the use case, do you go down the path of a hybrid web container approach? Do you need to think of a native uh, application, etc.? Then when it comes down to the specific question that you ask, which is, you know, agentry versus SUP, etc., uh, it's absolutely uh, fair to say, you know, SAP's mobile capabilities are to a great extent, you know, they come from the Sybase heritage and the Cyclo heritage. Both incredibly powerful platforms, customer uh, install base, etc. So we are in the process of rationalizing and converging those platforms. So what you will hear from us over the next several months, actually several weeks actually, is our plans around actually rationalizing those platforms so that we take the best of what those platforms had, whether it's in the case, whether it's in the form of development environments, development tool chains, whether it's in terms of server runtime infrastructure, whether it's in terms of data integration, uh, in terms of integration to disparate backends, both SAP and non-SAP, uh, and flexibility for developers, whether they want to use our development tools or they want to use popular tools like an Accelerator or a Sencha or a PhoneGap. Uh, so at this point, we don't have anything to share kind of in a public okay. fashion, okay. but we are working with our customers who have those questions to share under NDA, you know, what kinds of decisions they should take. Got it. The key takeaway though is, you know, our customers should be rest assured that there is a clean migration path that is being defined. Uh, because both these platforms have been around, you know, for yeah. a long time, 10, 15 years or so. So we are very cognizant of that, that, you know, there is there has to be a very clean migration path. Uh, so that we are absolutely planning for. So that specific piece around whether it's Cyclo or SUP, that is going to be moved. Okay. So there's going to be one rationalized platform that's going to be called the SAP Mobile Platform. That's going to be the branding, and that's going to be the rubric under which a whole set of capabilities that our customers have been used to will be available. No, that's fair, I understand. It takes time to be able yep. to rationalize investments that you've acquired. Um, but it, is it fair to say today that there's likely, in any giant multinational organization, there's likely to be different strategies for different kinds of apps and different ways of integrating today? Um, I think, yeah, if we were to go into a customer, uh, and this happens a lot, um, you know, most large organizations, especially when it comes to mobile, uh, have historically done projects on an ad hoc basis. Uh, we run into situations where there's one application developed by one uh, set of uh, IT folks. Uh, they just did something in Objective-C. They got the SDK from Apple, built up an app. 
and then there's a, a, another team that just took a mobile browser approach right. to just extend out some internet applications. And there's some other team that decided over the last six to 12 months or so to standardize on say the SAP mobile platform. And so in those situations, then the discussion starts becoming, uh, you know, wouldn't we be better off standardizing across the company on a standard platform so you get some efficiencies of scale, both from developer uh, competency, then also from a production infrastructure standpoint. So those kinds of discussions happen. Uh, you know, is there a simple, straightforward kind of, you know, silver bullet answer to that? Absolutely not, because it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, some of these apps were built a particular way. Uh, there's a history to them. It's not easy sometimes to kind of undo the, you know, the existing investment. So you have to find a natural point from a technology refresh standpoint to say, okay, when it comes to add a whole set of new features from a functionality standpoint, or, you know, this was developed in an iOS SDK. Now, all of a sudden, your user requirements are that you need to support Android. That's a logical point to then say, okay, now you should think about using a mobile platform to start rationalizing how you develop applications. Last question before I let you go, Vishy. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion on the uh, usability of HTML5 today? Is it ready today for enterprises, or do you think it still has to wait? Uh, I think in terms of when you say usability, uh, from a user experience standpoint, I think it's there today. Uh, is it, uh, or should it be, today the de facto uh, approach for developing applications for enterprise kind of bar none? Probably not. Uh, our approach is that, you know, we need to be in a position as SAP to provide the tools and let kind of the market and end users decide which approach they want to use. Uh, we definitely see a lot of use cases where HTML5 is a logical way to go. And there are some times when a native application is uh, the best way to go. If you're looking for deep device integration, if you're looking for developing very responsive applications that require, you know, whether it's in the form of gaming, animation, or in a B2C environment where you need deep engagement with the application, you're probably better off going with native. But there are a lot of what we call relatively lightweight applications, uh, whether it's online applications, simple productivity approval type apps, HTML5 meets those needs today. And I think that that's going to be, you know, we don't look at it as an either or, it's an and. Uh, we don't want to make that determination as to what's best for our end customers. We provide the tools that support both approaches. Great. Vishy, I want to say thank you so very much for sharing your thoughts with all of us today. Thank you, Kevin. It was a pleasure.